Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming in uh, this uh, beautiful day where we had 25 centimeters of snow. And in Calgary, we call that just child's play. So <laughs> welcome to snow here. Um, I'm going to talk to you more about Wedge Networks and what we do. We have this simple vision that network traffic should be clean before it comes to your network. And this is because of what we're seeing out there in the network. And let me see if this works. So um, first of all, some, uh, some uh, housekeeping notes and uh, compliance wanted me to say that stuff that uh, this is basically there are some forward looking information. So uh, please take care when you're looking at that. So there you go. Now, let me talk to you more about our company. Uh, what we do in a nutshell, uh, we provide software that cleans your network traffic in real time before the traffic makes it into the, the network. Why is that important? Because as you have heard previously in the previous presentations, there are lots of IoT devices, there are lots of basic devices that cannot really protect themselves, but also the network itself is changing. We're moving basically from networks where everything is on your endpoint, everything is in your PC, to everything is moving out in the cloud. We call this the cloud connected world. Um, we are actually in three uh, key markets in uh, North America, in the Middle East and in Asia, and you will see why that's the case. And we serve actually customers that need this kind of security, this kind of high, high, high accurate security. Um, our technology, by the, by the way, is built from, from the ground up, so we don't, we don't use uh, components here and there. So let us speak about the problem. What's, what's happening right now in, in, in network security? Now, in a nutshell, um, we have had basically lots of attacks. In fact, if you look at the attacks out there, um, we're actually averaging, you know, in the hundreds of millions of attacks here. Um, for example, last attack that personally atta uh, impacted me, I had to go and change my, all of my credit cards, uh, my passport actually as well, the Marriott attack, and we're going to hear more of those um, in the, in the few, in few years. Now, the problem why these attacks are happening is because we're seeing new generation of malware. We're seeing new malware on a daily basis. To give you an idea, previously, in 2006, the whole new malware that was produced over the year was less than 130,000. This year, we're projecting we're going to have nearly half a billion new pieces of malware written and attacking networks, and that's the problem we see here. So basically we call this zero-day attacks, malware that has not been seen before. And now, because of the network is changing, because for example you're carrying cell phones, because of the smart cars you're probably driving, because of the IoT devices you have, like home cameras and so on, how are you protecting them? You cannot, for example, load Kaspersky or Semantic or whatever have you in these cameras. I cannot basically upgrade my car to do so. So network defense is the way you want to fight the malware, and that's the area we're in as Wedge. OK, let me talk about why this malware is happening. I'm going to go into a bit of depth here uh, and tell you why cyber attacks are now considered the third highest risk to our development, our progress as humanity, and why these breaches are happening. In a nutshell, if you again look at the number of new malwares, as I mentioned here, in 2006, 2007, in the whole year, we had 130,000 new pieces of malware. Last year, we're actually projected to have nearly 10, new, 10 million new pieces of malware, which translates into around 430,000. To give you an idea what this means, that every day we're seeing one million new pieces of malware. This is, this is staggering. We haven't seen this before. And it's actually causing companies a lot of grief. Now, to put it even in more perspective, every hour there's 900, nearly 1,000 new malware. People out there are writing malware. And the reason they're doing so is because it's economically viable. Now, all they have to do is go in, take your network hostage, and ask you for bitcoins. And you will have to pay because actually the cost of recovering the data is much higher. Now, the bigger problem we have right now is the traditional software or traditional solutions out there are not equipped for this new volume of malware. For example, firewalls nowadays use typically you know, signatures. Signatures that basically like having a database of people who we have seen before or malware you have seen before. Just imagining having to change the signatures every hour. It's, it's very difficult. And in addition to that, these zero-day attacks are typically tailored for you. They're written with a purpose to, them to, to, to damage your network. So right now, the industry is suffering. We have these signature attacks, or these signatures, heuristics are no longer sufficient for this, for this, for this malware. 
Now, again, some more, some more, some more, some more statistics here for you. The cost of malware infection is going higher and higher. Like right now, no one knows how much it's going to cost the guys at Marriott to, to, to come back and compensate people and so on. But to give you an idea, the cost has increased nearly 62%. There are two reasons for that. First of all, we're moving a lot of our data to the network, that's the first thing. And the second thing, basically, malware writers are becoming very good at their trick. They know what they're supposed to do. So the uh, second thing as well is that nowadays, the solution we have, which is to use sort of like sandboxes and so on to analyze what happened to the network, is really not catching up. Our security professionals are really overwhelmed by the amount of alerts they have to deal with, and it's becoming, quite frankly, a losing game. So let me tell you how we protect our networks today. So today, for example, you'd go ahead and put a firewall. So this firewall would be scanning the traffic in real time. It would typically use hardware. It would typically use signatures of things it has seen before. And if there's something it hasn't seen before, it will send it to a sandbox. A sandbox is nothing more than another computer that would sort of try to run this file that it doesn't know about and see what kind of damage could it cause. The problem is as follows, is that it also lets the content go through, which simply means you have already infected your network only for the sandbox to catch up and tell you that, oh, by the way, remember that file that passed through your network an hour ago? It was infected. And now you have to go and remediate and so on. And in fact, actually, this is the problem we have, is that it's usually too late at that time. It's usually too late to recover. Here's, by the way, some of the best sandboxes in the industry. And the one that I have not highlighted there is from Cisco. So to give you an idea, Cisco can be sort of like nearly 99.2% accurate after nearly four hours. Four hours is too much because four hours is four hours that me as a hacker can go into your network and exfiltrate network data. So what is needed is real-time protection against known and unknown malware. Now, the promise is AI. And AI, basically, there are lots of companies in the AI space. And here are the basically the five companies you should know about, starting from Deep Instinct, which is a company in Israel, Silence, which is our partner, and other companies out there. The problem with AI is that AI can work if you have full visibility, if you have access to the full data as going through your network. And that's something we have managed to do as a company. We basically assemble the content in real time and be able to scan it and scan it against AI. Now, quickly here, there are two different types of AI. There is predictive and there is status, a behavioral. And quite frankly, the, uh, the, the behavioral takes time because it has to, to understand what's going through the network. Now, let me speak more about our approach and then wrap it up there. Um, in a nutshell, what we have managed to do is we have this software technology. As traffic is going through the network, we assemble it exactly the same way as your endpoint. We get to see the files, the PDFs, the PowerPoints, everything, and we scan it using signatures as well as using uh, artificial intelligence. And that's how we're able to stop uh, malware in real time. The four tenants we have in our technology is the patent we have which allows us to do deep content inspection, assemble everything in real time. The second thing is that basically our ability to do that uh, in line and the AI engine as well as the, the visualization without relying on any kind of hardware. We can deliver our solution in, into the cloud. We can deliver it into, into, into appliances. And also, in addition to that, our approach allows uh, companies that use our technology to better utilize their hardware. Now, in a nutshell, this is what we do. And this is probably the last slide I talk about the technology in depth. Um, we take the traffic as it's coming through. The first layer, we scan for packet anomalies. The second layer, we scan for signatures, which is what the industry does. The third layer, we scan for heuristics, because a lot of malware is old, what we call as old wine in new bottles. You basically package it differently. And the last layer is what we do. We use artificial intelligence to scan malware in real time. So we're the only company out there that can detect and stop in real time both known and unknown malware. Okay, um, very quickly here, um, just go to show you. The market is, is huge. I don't need to speak to you more about it, but it's basically targeted to be around 170 billion by 2022. Our addressable market is actually going to be nearly 24 um, million uh, by a billion, sorry, by, by, by this year, by last year. Um, the opportunity is, is well defined in terms of, in terms of the, the, the growth, in terms of market size, and we are in the three large markets 
that uh, require this technology, which is Asia, the Middle East, as well as um, uh, North America. Uh, what we do, we sell our solution to enterprises, and we also have an MSSP version. And um, uh, I think I will have to wrap up because it's, uh, it's time over. Uh, if you needed to know more about us, you can come and see us in booth 421. Thank you so much.